Hello everybody and welcome to a new Jurassic World Evolution 2 video where today we're going to be ranking all the DLCs that came to Jurassic World Evolution 2 and given the game looks to be at an end I think it's the perfect time to try something like this as I did do a ranking of the Planet Zoo DLCs a while back I wouldn't be able to rank the Jurassic World Evolution DLCs as I have not played the first game recently recently enough to give a reliable review so um yeah so let's get started with our jurassic world evolution 2 dlc ranking these radiant new additions to your park are sure to inspire awe at the wonders of science and humility at the power of discovery So, coming in in last place is the Secret Species Pack. The reason this pack is so low is primarily due to the fact that we as players had to pay for species that were a part of the first Jurassic World Evolution. Spinoceratops is not one of these, and is probably my favourite species from the pack, uh, helming from seasons 4 and 5 of Camp Cretaceous. But the Ankylodicus, which did get a redesign, so it is perhaps the newer of the three returning hybrids, but then we have Spinoraptor and Stegoceratops, both of which looking pretty much exactly the same as before, with a few minor changes, but they pretty much look an eye to eye um, port over from the first game. Um, the pack also introduces a Lux skin for all four of these hybrids, and also for Indominus Rex and Indoraptor, but something that holds this pack lower is the fact it also lacked a free update to give the players that have not really been a fan of hybrids something to get excited about after a near three month break between the DLCs. This was easily the most controversial DLC ever released for the game. And yeah, it, it, <laughs> I think it should definitely go in last years. I wasn't really that big of a fan of it, but uh, yeah. The next pack on our list does not really have an extravagant trailer, but uh, is the Deluxe Edition, which arrived with five new species and three new vehicle skins alongside the release of the game itself. The species in question are Megalosaurus, Pachyrhinosaurus, Atomborosaurus, Geosternbergia, and Pliangosaurus. So this pack faces a similar problem with the Secret Species pack in that it makes us pay for a species from the first game but not only that but a base game species from the first game. Wyangosaurus is one of the first dinosaurs you are able to unlock on Isla Matanceros during the campaign of Jurassic World Evolution and yet here it is being sold again. So yeah <laughs> you see the problem here. However, this pack can be given high praise as it introduces four completely new species. Megalosaurus is a solid medium carnivore and was one of the first dinosaurs ever discovered. Pachyrhinosaurus is my favourite ceratopsian, so I was really happy to see it here. Attenboroughsaurus, named of course after Sir David Attenborough, who is a true hero of mine. And this plesiosaur is perhaps the best looking in the game. We hope these new additions will give your guests an unforgettable and safe experience. And so we come to the late Cretaceous pack. One of the weakest of the species packs in my personal opinion, some people may hold it higher, though it does have some good species. Australovenator is one of Australia's most famous dinosaurs and was also our first and only Megaraptoran for the game. A very interesting group of dinosaurs I would love to see expanded on in the, in the sequel, Jurassic World Evolution 3 if it happens. Alamosaurus is a well-known titanosaur from North America and had a pretty good design. I think it was one of the most unique looking of the sauropod designs. Uh, however, Barbarodactylus is probably my least favorite species in the pack. Now, this species was likely chosen as early in 2022 when this pack was released. Prehistoric Planet came out, showcasing this Nyctosaurid pterosaur. Now, something that many Nyctosaurids is in paleo media are depicted with is a more antler like crest on their heads a long thin crest with two long prongs sort of like a pronghorn antelope barbara here unfortunately doesn't possess that instead 
presented with a much smaller crest that is more similar to many of the current pterosaurs, only having a stretch of thinner membrane between the two prongs. It's, um, it doesn't give it as much flair as it could have, and doesn't make it stand out as much. And on the back of the Dominion Bison expansion, this pterosaur, and potentially even Australovenator, could have been coated in a downy feathery coating, or proto feathers for Australovenator, and of Pycnofibers for the Barbara Dactyl, similar, similar to the coating adorned by Quetzalcoatlus and Thanatos Dracon. The last species is the Styxosaurus, which is one of the best species in the pack, and it is also a bioluminescent species with, I think, three or four pattern colours that let it glow in the dark of the lagoons. But this pack, for me, is not as solid of a species pack as the others. Add new experiences for our guests, and possibly a few new challenges. So, I mean, it almost hurts me to put this here, because I actually do really enjoy Camp Cretaceous, and I was really excited when this pack came out. But the Camp Cretaceous Dinosaur Pack comes next. So, I'll say now that I really enjoyed the first three seasons of Camp Cretaceous as well as Hidden Adventure. And I really like the species included in them. Species from the last two seasons as well. So, I welcome this Dinosaur Pack which includes two new species. The Scorpius Rex, the Monolophosaurus, and the first two varying dinosaurs in Aranosaurus and Ketrosaurus. With a specific skin for Pierce as well as a myriad of different skins for some of the most iconic dinosaurs from the series. Creatures like the Parasaurolophus Lux, which I could have seen as a new variant, Bumpy the Ankylosaurus, the Baryonyx trio of Grim, Chaos and Limbo, Tauro the Carnotaurus, and Big Easy the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Even though I like this pack, it doesn't reach above others as it is quite niche to the players who enjoyed Camp Cretaceous and the dinosaurs in it. The pack also lacked a majority of other dinosaurs that were present in the show that do have appearances distinct from any of these skins that are currently in the game, such as the Camp Cretaceous Spinosaurus, Manticore Velociraptor, a variety of Stegosaurus skins, the Ceratosauruses, the Lophosaurus, among others like Burn Tora and weirdly Little E.T. as we got Big E.T. in this pack but instead got only one of the two. There were also some species that were already present in Season 4 of Camp Cretaceous, like the Spinoceratops and the Smilodon that were not included, but the latter is an understandable exemption. So for those reasons, I unfortunately needed to put it here. We hope these new species thrive in your park. Please keep us informed of any developments or incidents that may arise. Prior pack to the Camp Cretaceous DLC is the Early Cretaceous pack, our first post-release DLC featuring four species that I believe were going to be in the base game initially, given how close it was to the release of the game itself. The species include the Werosaurus, one of the few Cretaceous stegosaurs discovered, and it was certainly nice to get one of a substantial size, as many stegosaurs in the game currently are rather small. The pack also gave us two more Australian species in the adorable and iconic Mimni, and the Kronosaurus, one of my favourite marine reptiles in the game. And then finally, we have Sungaripterus, one of those pterosaurs that is somehow included in almost every Jurassic game these days. I was first introduced to this pterosaur in Jurassic World the game and Jurassic World Live, so it was certainly a pterosaur I expected to show up eventually. But overall, this is a solid pack of animals that I think represent the early Cretaceous quite well, and I also like this pack for diversifying Australian prehistoric life as well. So I think that was pretty cool, this pack. Especially chaos. You can come to Malta with your big plans. Just don't say I didn't warn you. At the halfway mark is the second and last expansion for the game, the Dominion Malta expansion. Set in the Mediterranean around the events of Jurassic World Dominion, this expansion contained a campaign as well as a variety of different features to make this a unique story with returning characters from the film in Kayla Watts, Barry Sanben, Sayona Santos and Lewis Dodgson. 
Major features included three new maps with one coming with a natural lagoon. There's also a Maltese building set and new features like the Dinosaur Exchange, loyalty points to the DFW and Maltese Dinosaur Trafficking Ring, and also the ability to hop between islands and trade dinosaurs between the islands too. In terms of new species, we've received the Atrociraptor, including four skins for the movie individuals of Ghost, Tiger, Red and Panthera, the Lystrosaurus, the Morris and Trapidus, and our first omnivore, the Oviraptor. Some new variants and skins were added too, the Dominion Iguanodon variant, the Demon Carnotaurus, the smaller, fluffier, almost vampiric Dimorphodon, and this pack's biggest selling point for me personally, the Battle of Big Rock Allosaurus. For those who don't know, Allosaurus is my favourite dinosaur and I was really excited when this Allosaurus was added in this expansion. However, overall, the pack's major features are contained to the multi campaign. Otherwise, features like the loyalty points, island hopping, and inter island dinosaur trading are restricted to just the campaign. This does bring this DLC down as the story of the campaign was also not the best. And the islands themselves are not the most interesting places to build on. Of course, I have used them now and again particularly for Dominion Prologue recreations. Other than that, not much, and the Natural Lagoon isn't really that versatile either. Another disappointment of the pack was the lack of the fighting animation between the Lystrosaurus and Oviraptor, a detail that can be seen in the Jurassic World Dominion Extended Edition between these two new species. So out of the game's two expansions, this was certainly the weakest, but the species and variants of the pack kept it ahead of the competition previous. Species once lived many epochs apart, now brought together for all park managers by the power of science. Moving into the top five, we have our most recent DLC, the Park Managers Collection Pack, which arrived with four new species and a new skin for an existing dinosaur. So the four species we got here were the Megalodon, the most requested lagoon species and certainly the star of the pack, followed by Microceratus, a species from Jurassic World Dominion and probably the longest requested dinosaur in the game, with two of the three skins seen in Jurassic World Dominion, though the third can be recreated with the skin and pattern colours. Next we have Segasaurus, though it was highly requested, being a species that was part of the original Jurassic Park dinosaur roster, it is probably the least exciting animal in the pack, given it is so similar to existing dinosaurs like Complex Nathus and Coelophysis. It doesn't really possess anything too unique to offer in comparison. The final new species is easily the most surprising, the Natos Dracon, a large ash darkid from South America. It is very well made with a large head, great coloration, and also the picno fiber covering its body, one of the more accurate pterosaurs ever depicted in the game. The final edition was a skin for Little Easy, a Tyrannosaurus Rex from Camp Cretaceous Seasons 4 and 5. This was a welcome addition as back in Camp Cretaceous we received her mother Big Easy and it did feel weird that we didn't get this skin back in that pack. My major gripes with the pack and why it is only 5th are that Segasaurus, though a legacy species, is not very exciting. And 2. Why is it Thanos Dracon? Th Thanos Dracon? Why is it Thanatos Dracon? when the far better known Hatsugopteryx was pining for inclusion. It, it really did just baffle me why we didn't get Hatsugopteryx in this pack. Instead, Frontier opted for a lesser known species that I can respect why they did, but in a pack of highly requested additions, it really felt out of place here. But for those two factors, that is why this very solid pack comes in at fifth spot. These breathtaking new additions are sure to give your guests an unforgettable underwater experience. Moving on into fourth, we have the Prehistoric Marine Species Pack, one of the best packs in terms of animal lineups, including species that were perfect additions to the lagoons in a pack like this. We got four new lagoon animals, including the Devonian Dunkleosteus, a placoderm fish that is the oldest animal in the game, and a fan favourite prehistoric predator that did initially fool us for Megalodon, but hey, we got both in the end, so we're all happy. 
then followed by the Nothosaurus, a semi-aquatic reptile from the Triassic, with a model based on its appearance in Season 5 of Camp Cretaceous, coming in with a bioluminescent skin as well. Perhaps the most surprising and exciting addition of the pack was the Archelon, a large sea turtle of the late Cretaceous that, like the Nothosaurus, is semi-aquatic, making use of the lagoon rock platform included in the pack. Lastly, we have Shonisaurus, one of the largest ichthyosaurs and a popular request to get a larger member of this diverse group of marine reptiles. Alongside this pack, we also got a lagoon viewing dome as well as new social behaviours for the lagoon animals. This pack is placed in fourth, not down to the species included, but the number of new features for the lagoon specifically. It would have been really nice to get more lagoon animal behaviours like breathing at the surface, breaching from the water, and more importantly, interactions with aspects of the environment outside of lagoon walls like the Mosasaurus, particularly being able to catch pterosaurs, helicopters and dinosaurs from the side of the lagoon. Being able to change the water clarity and colour, rock formations and caves, or even being able to change the character of the lagoon border, giving it a concrete border or a rock border, even giving it a beach, which would allow species like the Nothosaurus to escape, and also allow other species like the Spinosaurus, Dimetrodon, Pyroraptor to show off their semi-aquatic capabilities. There was a lot more potential that the DLC in the update had, Though it doesn't hold the DLC down as those features didn't happen. So it is, we should be happy with what we did get. And yeah, this, this DLC was a really good one, but it does come in at fourth. Known to instill fear into their enemies with their ferocious roar. Now we're into the top three for the Feathered Species Pack. A DLC that would set the stage for many new feathered species to appear after it. it. was what the Dominion DLCs introduced, that being feathered, more accurate species of Mesozoic Reptile, particularly the Theropods and Pterosaurs. This pack includes two of the most famous feathered species in the Utyranus, a fearsome Proceratosaurid from early Cretaceous China, the Dinochirus, a huge Ornithomimosaur that was our second omnivore in the game, being able to eat both vegetation and fish. Then we also got the Sinoceroptrix, a small predator from the same formation as Eutyrannus, and one of the only dinosaurs we have been able to determine the pattern of, and was also the first feathered dinosaur to be found that was not directly related to birds. Lastly, the Anurignathid pterosaur J. Holopterus, also from China and is by far the smallest flying animal in the game, and came with its own special insectivore feeder. This pack is fantastic, and it's certainly one of the best species pack lineups. What brings it down is probably J. Helopterus and the Insectivore Feeder. Though it was a cool addition, J. Helopterus isn't really the most usable addition, and it is also absolutely tiny in the larger aviaries that we have for the bigger pterosaurs. So maybe the addition of a smaller aviary would have been good for this little fella, and the Insectivore Feeder is not very flexible and can only be used by J. Holopterus. Even Dimorphodon that in its own species field guide had stated fed on insects, not even the smaller Dominion variant can feed from it. It is certainly a great pack and this little thing for the insectivore feeder certainly does not, doesn't knock this DLC out of third place. Proudly draped in feathers, this species displays fierce aggression and its incredibly strong limbs are capable of delivering bone crushing blows. In second place is one of the more exciting DLCs for me personally, the Cretaceous Predator Pack. Although it is confined to the Cretaceous and predatory dinosaurs, it is nonetheless a great group of species. This pack had four species like the Tarbosaurus, an Asian relative of Tyrannosaurus rex with a model inspired by the Tarbosaurus seen in the Camp Cretaceous Special Experience Hidden Adventure with a complimentary skin from that episode. Followed by the Utah Raptor, Easily my favourite dinosaur of the pack with a great coat of feathers. Large size compared to the other dromosaurs in the game and one of the best made dinosaur models in the game. Though it would, it would be nice if it hunted in packs. Gigantoraptor is probably the most obscure pick in this pack, being an omnivore and also wasn't able to hunt anything initially until the following patch fixed that. Finally, the highly requested carnivore. Concavenator, a Carcharodontosaurid from Spain during the early Cretaceous with a distinct hump on its back, it is also a very well-made dinosaur and a welcome addition to the to the roster. Now, 
This pack doesn't really compete with the top spot, but these species are some of the most exciting and usable dinosaurs we've ever gotten. And I also just like the idea of this DLC, and carnivorous dinosaurs have always been a favourite of mine. And I felt that this th th this was best to be in second spot, as I really do love the Utah Raptor and the Concavenator Tarbosaurus and Gigantoraptor. They're all fantastically well-made dinosaurs. If you hadn't guessed already, but in the top spot is perhaps the best DLC out of, Jurassic, out of both Jurassic World Evolution games, in my personal opinion, the Dominion Biosyn Expansion. A DLC inspired by and released around the time of Jurassic World Dominion, featuring two new maps being the amazing Biosyn Valley with its cloud forest atmosphere and rolling mist amongst snow-capped mountains, to the Sierra Nevada of California where the map is entirely covered in snow and is part of the Chaos Theory mission. The expansion includes a two-part campaign where you will set up the Biosyn Sanctuary from the ground up and utilize a variety of new features like amber mines, a hyperloop system that also connects to viewing towers and multiple buildings, and also the addition of the highly usable invisible fences which have become one of the most useful barrier types in the game. As for the animals, there are many. Four new species, two new variants, and a variety of skins. Firstly, we have the Therizinosaurus, easily one of the best dinosaurs in the game, with it being so unique and fun to use. The Dimetrodon, our first Permian animal and an iconic species that is a welcome addition. The Quetzalcoatlus, the largest flying species in the game and probably one of the best designed. The last new species is the vibrant and fully feathered Pyroraptor. Though it can't go swimming under ice, it is still a striking addition to the roster of small carnivores. The variants include the Giganotosaurus with a model ripped straight from the film, as well as the towering Dreadnoughtus, which is probably my favourite sauropod in the game to use as it has great patterns and a great look. As for skins, we have three Parasaurolophus skins with a changed model and everything. It would have been cool if we got this as a variant instead, given it looks very different enough from the base power itself. We also got a Dilophosaurus skin with, from the movie with its yellow frill. The last two skins are that of the Tyrannosaurus Rex the scarred Rexy skin and a feathered Prologue T-Rex as well. It would have been nice if the Prologue T-Rex had a bit more of Rexy's pattern in its face particularly as the Prologue T-Rex was basically just the feathered coated um, Rexy herself and maybe even a Prologue Giganotosaurus to act as sort of the base of that variant itself so that, uh, well, you could only have... You didn't have to have the scars all the time. That's what I'm trying to get at here. It's like when they added colors to the variants, the scars remain from uh, the, the Dominion Giganotosaurus's model. So again, the Prologue Giga would have compromised that, I think, and would have made that a bit more uh, <laughs> better, <laughs> in my personal opinion. The campaign also included returning characters from the film, such as Alan Grant, Ellie Sattler, Claire Deering, Lewis Dodson, and Ramsey Cole. I use all of these species and many of these features as well as the Biosyn map very often as it is one of the most immersive and buildable maps in the game. With all these features and all these dinosaurs and creatures, it is no wonder why I've put the Biosyn expansion taking the number one spot. So yeah, that is my personal ranking of the DLCs for Jurassic World Evolution 2. Let me know how you would rank all the DLCs from the game and whether you disagree with some of my placements i i know there are some dodgy ones in there but that's just the way i like those dlcs but uh yeah leave your thoughts in the comments down below and i'll see you all in the next video bye bye